How's it going guys? My name is Arthur and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through task four of the JP Morgan quantitative research virtual internship. So as a reminder, in the previous task, we essentially created a function that predicts the loss of a potential loan given a bunch of different variables. And the FICO score was one of those important inputs that generally had a pretty high correlation uh, in relation to someone's probability of default and also the size of the expected default value. So that's where this task kicks off. It essentially says that, yes, it seems like FICO scores are a pretty good indication of whether someone is going to default on a loan or not. Now, FICO scores in general range from 300 all the way up to like 850. So they are integer values. And our task here is essentially to come up with the best way to bucket these FICO scores that will then allow us to do that analysis to see the probability of default uh, given which bucket a FICO score falls into. All right, so let me actually read what the task is here. So it says that we would like to find out the boundaries that best summarize the data of those buckets that the FICO scores are gonna go into. You need to create a rating map that maps the FICO scores of the borrowers to a rating where a lower rating signifies a better credit score. The process of doing this is known as quantization. So then we have uh, the other portion that is important here is optimizing different properties of the resulting buckets, such as the mean squared error or log likelihood. So basically these are the two approaches that we can optimize to get our buckets. Uh, I think I'm gonna go with the log likelihood here because I just think it's a little bit more robust approach. The mean squared error is a little bit more simple. So we'll give this one a try and we'll see how it goes. All right, so as always, Always, we begin by importing our uh, data frame here. I just called it T4 loan data, and this is our data frame that comes up. Uh, and then the very first step that I take is I effectively initialize the first number of buckets that I want to try. Uh, I actually tried a couple different ones. Um, so to keep it consistent, this PD cut data frame essentially adds an, an additional bucket column here. And because we're using four buckets, we're going to get this, this column to essentially split the FICO scores from zero to three, which gives us those four buckets. So moving on, we have this uh, initialize the bucket boundaries section. So here I'm just trying to do the kind of the skeleton of the code. Uh, we're going to make, we're going to see the optimizations come through, but to start off, we essentially calculate a log likelihood uh, given what we initialize with those boundaries first up. So let me walk you through the code here. So the whole point of this uh, calculate log likelihood function is effectively to see how well the bucketing corresponds to the default rates that we are seeing. So just quickly walking you through uh, what these lines mean. Obviously here, our log likelihood, we begin with zero, uh, and then we iterate across all of our number of buckets. Uh, here we select the, say we begin with the very first bucket that we have. We essentially select the total number of observations, which is like the total number of borrowers. Then the KI here is the sum, which is the total number of defaults that we see in that bucket. Here we see the probability of default in that bucket, uh, followed by this uh, accumulation pro log probability mass function. And then our return output is basically the sum of log likelihoods for all of those buckets. You notice this indentation kind of goes back here, uh, which corresponds with this for loop. So here we get this initial log likelihood, which will be related to uh, basically our number of buckets that we started with, which is four, and then followed by this output that I will show you guys here. When I ran the function, we get an initial log likelihood of a negative 13, um, which it's kind of hard to interpret exactly, but my understanding is a number closer to zero sort of indicates better bucketing with the context of this problem. And just to see sort of going on here, this is the chart that I'm generating. Uh, so we have the different colors representing the buckets of zero to three, and then default is no. So uh, here we have a default at the top uh, for these 
respective buckets and given the FICO score on the x-axis. And then zeros here for when there were no defaults, also indicated by the colors. As you can see, there's quite a lot of overlap, uh, which I think it just depends on kind of the data that you're given. So moving on to this middle section here, Essentially, as long as we don't see an improvement in our best likelihood function, which is a decrease in our log likelihood output, we will see this iteration continue. This here, this loop here is essentially an iteration over each boundary uh, other than the very first one. Uh, and last one, which are the mi minimum and maximum of the scores. So this here is saying that basically each boundary is shifted up or down by 10 units. This is just kind of totally random. You can kind of tune this to whatever you think is best. This pd.cut essentially uh, updates the uh, buckets. So the FICO scores are rebucketed using this based on that new boundary. We also calculate the new likelihood right here. And as I kind of mentioned earlier, we now check if the likelihood is larger than the prior one. If it is, then we say that it is improved. If not, we revert the boundary to its uh, original position. So we have this, this loop happening here. And let's see our output uh, that we get. So you can see through these four iterations, uh, it just so happens that it's four, we have a maximum up here, maximum iterations of 100. So basically after four iterations, it kind of found the what it thinks are the optimum boundaries for our four buckets. So I think you could probably leave it there and actually have a kind of all right answer. But I was thinking about it and what was bugging me was that at the very beginning when we said that there are four buckets, it's kind of arbitrary uh, and we don't know if that's actually the case. So I decided to add an optimized bucket count function as well, which I will show the code for now. I actually thought this was a little bit finicky. I was getting kind of mixed results. What I ended up getting, I think makes sense. Let me know in the comments if you guys tried this and got a slightly different result or if I'm missing something totally open to learning. Good chance that this is not 100% right, but let me walk you through this. So with this next section is where I decided to optimize the buckets. Uh, it, effectively, it's very similar to optimizing the boundaries above. In fact, we actually use that uh, optimize buckets formula right here. And another notable difference is we begin an initialization for a best overall likelihood of uh, effectively a very large negative number. So because our best likelihood effectively approaches zero. Um, anyway, so as we walk through this, we essentially start with some range of potential buckets that we're thinking of down below here. I'm going to use four to 10. Um, so I already have that in my mind. Uh, and uh, so imagine that rolling through here, we begin with um, bucket X, it kind of divides it up, it finds a likelihood uh, for that buck for those buckets. And then we actually use these the optimization function to then calculate the uh, boundaries given that bucket. And we have a bunch of print statements and then basically a similar check if I guess our optimization is getting better or worse, which is what this check is. So uh, my inputs are here. Uh, and then I run this function. This is the iterations that we get. So we start. So this is the output of each iteration. It tests a bucket and then basically optimizes the uh, boundaries given the number of buckets. And as you go all the way through, it lands on the best number of buckets being 10. And then in this next section, we, by the way, that happens because we get the log likelihood of being 3.9, which is negative 3.9, which is the lowest out of those. Plugging in our results, uh, which are the 10 buckets and the boundaries, we get a chart that looks like this. Once again, it's kind of similar to what we saw from the very beginning. Here you can see that it's slightly offset. So the defaults at the top that were yes, there was a default for the given FICO scores are slightly offset to the left. Uh, the ones below that didn't default are slightly offset to the right. And then the color coding kind of helps us see that there was actually a default uh, in like the 800 and above category with this one here. Uh, and we had a couple low FICO scores that actually weren't defaults. Um, 
down there. In terms of answering the actual question, this is basically my answer that I arrived to. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions or suggestions on how your code is performing. Uh, I think this was a bit more of a difficult one. Certainly several ways of approaching this. Uh, you can probably do slightly more kind of like brute force methods so feel free to share those are my suggested solutions for task four of the jp morgan uh, virtual internship there thank you guys for watching and i'll see you in the next one